Hi everyone. Today we are going to talk about genital urinary tract infections in females. And we are going to particularly focus on bacterial vaginosis, candidiasis and trichomoniasis. This topic is crucial not only for medical exams but also for understanding and managing these infections in real world practice. So first of all let's talk about the protective factors of the female genital urinary tract. The female genital urinary tract has several defense mechanisms to protect us against infections. The vagina normally has an acidic pH around 4.5 and this is maintained by lactobacillus species which produces lactic acid creating the environment which kills many pathogens. The normal flora which is the healthy vaginal flora particularly contains a lot of lactobacilli and they provide the barrier against harmful microbes by competing for nutrients and adhering to the vaginal epithelium. Apart from that, there is mucosal immunity which includes the immunoglobulin and cytokines and they help in recognizing and fighting off the pathogens. The ciliary movement of the female genital urinary tract is headed downwards so they would prevent the organisms ascending upwards. So whenever these protective factors are disrupted, it can lead to infections. So what are the risk factors for genital urinary tract infections? Common risk factors include using antibiotics because it can disrupt the normal vaginal flora, especially the lactobacilli, which predisposes to infections like candidiasis. Sexual activity, because it increases the risk of certain infections like trichomoniasis, which is a sexually transmitted infection. Hormonal changes, menstrual cycles, pregnancy and menopause can alter the vaginal pH and flora. And using the hygiene products and excessive douching, scented soaps and spermicides can irritate the vaginal lining and disrupt its natural flora. Now let's talk about the three most common genital urinary tract infections in female. Bacterial vaginosis. Bacterial vaginosis results from an imbalance in vaginal flora, often due to a decrease in the lactobacillus and an overgrowth of anaerobes like Gardnella vaginalis. These patients will typically present with a thin, white or greyish vaginal discharge. And they will have a strong fishy odor, particularly after sexual intercourse or menstruation. These patients will also complain of a mild vaginal itching or irritation. To diagnose a patient with bacterial vaginosis, we use the AMSEL criteria. There are four components in AMSEL criteria. Number one, thin, homogeneous discharge. Number two is positive whiff test, that is when you add potassium hydroxide to the discharge, they will give out a fishy odor. Number three is clue cells on microscopy. Uh, finally, a vaginal pH more than 4.5. So if a patient is present with three out of four of these uh, criteria, then we can diagnose this patient with bacterial vaginosis. When it comes to treatment of bacterial vaginosis, we can use metronidazole which can be given either as oral or gel, or we can use clindamycin cream. If we are treating this patient with metronidazole, we have to educate them regarding not to have alcohol while they are on the metronidazole treatment because of the risk of causing disulfiram-like reaction. Next up, let's talk about vulvovaginal candidiasis, which is very commonly known as yeast infection. Vulvovaginal candidiasis is due to an overgrowth of candida albicans, which is a yeast that typically resides in small amounts within the vagina, but it doesn't cause any symptoms. However, when certain factors can disrupt this balance and lead to an infection, like antibiotics, pregnancy, and uncontrolled diabetics are very common predisposing factors because they can alter the normal vaginal environment. Candidiasis is also considered as an opportunistic infection. Therefore, individuals with a compromised immune system, like patients with HIV AIDS, those who are undergoing chemotherapy, or if they are on immunosuppressive medications, they are at a higher risk of developing recurrent or severe infections of uh, candidiasis. So these patients will present with thick, white, cottage-like discharge, intense itching and redness of the vulva and vagina, dysuria that is painful urination and dyspareunia which is painful sexual intercourse. To diagnose these patients with candidiasis, we can use a microscopy or culture. 
In the microscopy, we will be looking at budding yeast and the presence of pseudohyphae. To treat these patients, we will use uh, topical antifungals like clotrimazole, omeconazole, or oral fluconazole. If they have recurrent cases or severe cases, they will require a longer course of treatment. Finally, our last topic for the day is trichomonasis. Trichomonasis is a sexually transmitted infection. This is caused by a protozoan called Trichomonas vaginalis. These patients will present with frothy green-yellow discharge with a foul odor and vaginal and vulva itching and irritation, strawberry cervix upon examination. To diagnose, we can use the wet mount microscopy where we will be looking at motile trichomonads. Nucleic acid amplification test, which is a very highly uh, sensitive and a specific test. And we can also use rapid antigen test, which is available only in some settings. To treat these patients, we can either use metronidazole or tinidazole. One thing to remember is that uh, when we are treating the patients, we have to treat both partners to avoid reinfections and we have to advise them regarding sexual abstinence until the treatment is complete. So that's a wrap on uh, genitourinary tract infections in females. I hope this breakdown helps you better understand regarding the genitourinary tract infections in females. So if you're someone who's checking this video for an exam, these are the high yield points that you might need to remember. And it's very easy to go for an answer if you remember these high yield points. For bacterial vaginosis, always be vigilant about thin grayish discharge with a fishy order. For candidiasis, always remember cottage cheese-like discharge and it's common in immunosuppressive patients. For trichomonasis, they will have a sexual history, strawberry cervix and very characteristic yellow-green discharge. So if you have any questions, you can drop them as comments below. I'd love to hear your suggestions on how I can improve my content. I'll see you guys all next week with another interesting video just like this. Until then, take care and goodbye.